scripture of focus this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 2. When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon, his son. I'm about to go the way of all the earth, he said, so be strong, act like a man. Observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him. Keep his decrees, his commandments, his laws and his regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Hey, well, good morning. Man, it is a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Do know this. Do not miss opportunity for this morning, the Lord to speak to you. I know we kind of get in some sort of routine. It's a new year, new me type deal. Kind of go back in. Just know that uh, God desires to speak to you, especially every time that we get together. So may you open your heart and your eyes and hear the word of the Lord today. Amen. I'm really excited about this because every one of us has a life that you're actually in charge of. Some of us in this room, you've done your best to destroy your life. Some of us in this room, you're doing the best that you can to chase a life, hoping that you get it. And I'm here to tell you right now, life's in front of you. And we're going to learn basically what I would consider the secret of life today. Now, right now you're going, <laughs> we've heard this before. But no, this one's for free. It doesn't cost anything. And it's not one of those deals you have to order now or you're going to miss it. Because this comes from God. And God is the same yesterday. Today, it will be the same tomorrow. In fact, we know in our life things change. Can I get an amen? amen. How many of you were uh, young individuals in the 70s? Yeah, remember what you used to wear? Huh? I know there was times you probably stood in front of the mirror and went, yeah. I'm always going to look like this. Right? And then the 80s came. And the way you dressed in the 70s. And I'm not exactly sure what happened in the 80s, man. I mean... Rock music turned into to guys that look like women and wore mascara and and did a lot of this stuff and, and then and then the nineties came, right? And then the nineties grunge came and it was really popular to be depressed. <laughs> so depressed I have to wear flannel everywhere I go. And then, then the two thousands came and, and then and then a Bieber came and I don't know what happened. After that, so, but we all sit there in those moments in life, and if you're old enough, you look back and you go, man, what I used to think was so important is not very important now, and there's a, a huge, a huge advice within that understanding. If you base your value and your identity off of what the world shows, you will never find content in life, Amen. because it always changes. Yeah. It always changes. I'm here to tell you right now, I can't wait till that cycle goes back to where good looking men are bald and a little bit heavy set. Because I'm going to be in, dude. I'm going to be like, wow, that guy looks good. I just, I woke up this way. <laughs> Everything changes. And what's sad is that the world tries to put us on that train. No, 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 it'll never change. This will complete your life only for it to change. And what happens, we continue to look for the meaning of life in a world that doesn't understand life. Because it has to reinvent it. That's why every new year we kind of go, no, I'm going to start brand new and it's going to be a new me. The problem is you still have the old habits. Man, we can definitely dress the outside of the body like we want. But the truth of the matter is, we got to change the inside. and We have to focus on something that doesn't change. Something that lasts forever. Something that goes beyond this world. And, and what Pastor Allen read is so important. Understand this. This is King David. And he is about to die. So he is giving his final words to his son. 
Some of you in this room, you never had that opportunity because you grew up in a broken home. Maybe you grew up in a home that didn't have love. I came from a, a family that not only had love and support, but my parents are still together. And I'm finding out that that's really the minority nowadays. And so what happens is the world begins to say, oh, no, 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 you aren't responsible for your life. It was the life you grew up in. That's the way you are. And that's why you are the way you are. And you'll never change. And I'm here to tell you, David is trying to tell his son something. No, here's the secret. Follow God. Amen. Obey him. And I promise you, everything will be good. Yes. That's it. Now, understand who David is. David is the king, the greatest king of Israel. And what's funny is we all love the idea of becoming a king, right? Right? The reality is you are kings and queens of your life. In fact, if you really want to put things in perspective, you live better than any king or, king or queen in the past. I don't have all the money. I don't have uh, assistance and attendance. You got air conditioning. <laughs> you got plumbing and you got cars and, and, and they don't have to have horses. And all. We, we love to watch the romanticism about what being a king and queen is. I'm telling you, you need to see your blessings you have right now. Amen. And here's what happens. David is telling his son, boy, don't miss this. In fact, parents in the room tonight, today, if you only had one minute to tell your children before you pass the most important thing you've learned about life, what would it be? I mean, think about it. Some of us would be like, don't let anybody get ahead of you. Don't trust anybody. Don't pay your taxes. The government's evil. Facebook, I just want you to know right now, that's a joke. I pay my taxes. I don't need anybody coming and, and looking at me. I do want to say hi to all my people out on the hill. I hope you guys are doing good. And I uh, know that we love you. And if, even though you guys can't be here, man, you're a part of us. Can I get an amen? amen? Now, as we continue to go through this, we begin to realize something. David became the king, and he is handing the kingdom over to his son. But notice what David is not saying. He's not saying don't trust your advisors. He's not saying always look good. He's not saying all the things that the world says. He simply says, hey, forget all that stuff. Follow God. Amen. If you follow God, if you hear God and obey God, then I promise you everything will line up. And you will have a good, long, lasting life. Man, it's easy to hear that, ladies and gentlemen. But I think a lot of times we're chasing the wrong things. Let me tell you a little bit about David real quick. Before David became a king, he was the runt of his family. He was the black sheep of his family. I want to say that again. He was the black sheep of his family. Makes me wonder if any of you can relate. He was forgotten. In fact, when, when they went to account for his sons, he, uh, his father brought out all of his brothers and they asked, is there any other brothers that you have, any other sons you have? He said, yes, but it's just David and all he does is tend my sheep. He got the least job. He got the grunt work. His job was to stay outside, tend to the sheep over and over and over again, day after day. According to the world, David's life was nothing. But understand what God was doing with David while he was tending sheep. He was teaching him how to be a king. David didn't know it. David didn't sit there and go, one day I'm going to be king. He didn't sit there and say that at all. In fact, the only thing David did was praise God while he was tending the sheep. I'll say that again. He praised God while he was tending his sheep. In other words, he praised God for the situation he was in right then. We all need to learn that. Right now, if you hate your job, I know 10 people who would love to have it. Oh, but it's not my job. It's just the people I work with. I don't like them. Well, maybe they don't like you either. <laughs> have we forgotten that we don't work for man? 
we work for God. And all the corners that you and I may cut and the bad attitudes that we may have, God sees that. And we're not being very appreciative for the situation God has us in. We need to listen. You need to praise God for the blessing that you have today. Notice that David, as he was a shepherd, would talk to God all the time, I guess, because you really can't talk to sheep. They don't talk back. But what happens is David begins to talk to God and he begins to praise God. And all of a sudden, uh, an animal comes to take the sheep and God says, go, protect your sheep. And he says, but God, I can't do it. It's a bear. And God said, don't worry, David, I'll go with you. So David goes and he conquers the bear and he saves the sheep. And another time, a lion came forth and God said, go, save your sheep, tend to your sheep. And David said, I can't. It's a lion. And he said, don't worry, David, I'll go with you. And so David went and he defeated a lion. And then when David was 14 years old, listen, young people. When David was 14 years old, according to some theologians, he went to visit the brothers, the real people of his family, and they were in battle. And he went to go see his brothers in battle. There was a nine-foot warrior that was talking noise about his Israelite family and his God. And David said to God, somebody needs to shut that giant up. And God went... (laughs) Go ahead, son. I'll go with you. And David went. And he killed the giant. He killed a warrior that was nine feet tall. But he would have never learned to do that had he not been a shepherd. He would have not learned to do that had he not learned to listen and obey. See, the whole thing is we go, oh my goodness, a 14-year-old boy killed a giant. No, that's not the great feat here. The great feat here is that a 14-year-old boy learned to listen to God and obey. Why do we chase the things that don't matter? Why do we chase the things of the world that end in death and decay when we should be focused on hearing and obeying? Well, I just don't know what I'm going to do with my life. What I'd like to do is do this. There's nothing wrong with that. All of us have ideas and dreams. Can I get an amen? Amen. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. God gives us that, but he gives it to us so that we will give it back to him. Lord, I want to be a rapper. (laughs) That was me. That was me in the 90s. Lord, I want to be a rapper for you. And he said, thank you. No. So, but Lord, I got skills. God's like, mm, you really don't. <laughs> no, but I want to do this for you. God's like, dude, you can't, you can't BS me, man. You know that, right? You can't sit there and go, here, God, here's the life I want, and I'll use it for you. <laughs> I promise you, I am so thankful that God did not answer all of my prayers the way I wanted him to. Amen. There has to be this understanding. The secret of life is trust him, hear him, and obey. Embrace what you have today. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're not in the job you want, that's fine. Be the best person in that job. And I promise you, because you work for God, eventually you'll work yourself out of that job. Get promoted. Whether the days are great or whether the days are bad, hearing and obeying is the secret of life. I'm telling you. Solomon later on, after he had heard his father and he became king, and once again he was very young. The theologians think he was a teenager. It says in 1 Kings chapter 3, starting in verse 3, it said that Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instruction given to him by his father David. It said that he was sitting there as we skipped to verse 6. Solomon answered God because God had asked him. Solomon, whatever you want, tell me and I'll give it to you. That's what God said to Solomon. He said, your dad was good. Now you're king. I appreciate your dad and because your dad was good. What do you want? I'll give it to you. I want to ask you this question right now. What would your answer be if God was before you saying, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And I know since we're all in church, we'd all turn into the Miss Americas. World peace. (laughs) 
What would you want right now? Because some of you, you're going, man, I need this, I need that, I need this. And here's the thing, you're not wrong. But you're chasing the wrong thing. Look at what Solomon's answer is. Verse 6 of 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to my father David because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on the throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give me, your servant, a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. Stop right there. Translation, Solomon answered God simply in saying, I just want you. God went to Solomon and said, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, you. Because my daddy told me that I'm to follow you. That everything is worthless compared to you. And because I follow you, everything will be fine. So, Lord, I need you. And look at what the Lord said. Verse 10, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. Wealth, honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long Life. Solomon's response was not about him. It was about God. What is your response today? Are you holding on to your dreams? Are you holding on to the identity that the world tells you? Or are you going to listen to the secret of life that did not come down from just words, but from people who have lived it? Lord, I mean, Pastor Travis, I just don't understand if I even believe in God. Give it a try. I can tell you this. I have never met anyone who totally gave themselves to God that regretted it. Now, I have seen people. I have even been this person, a person that pretended to be of God and then wondered why my life didn't change. Mm. I can remember when I was a kid was 15 years old. I was about to get a driver's license. And I remember there was a car that I wanted. Some of you may not even know what this car is. It was called a Conquest. (laughs) You seen those things around? Nope. (laughs) They didn't last. But I remember saying, Lord, this is your servant, Travis. If you get me this car, I'll never want another one. God's like, I'm going to save you from that. Because <laughs> listen, cars come and go. Fads come and go. Fashions come and go. God stays the same. And he's asking you to believe in him. Now I want to say this, and this is, if, this, if there's anything here today, hear this. I understand some of you were dealt a horrible hand when it comes to life. You didn't grow up in a nice environment. Maybe you grew up with brokenness. Maybe you grew up being hated. Maybe you grew up always wanting to please but never were able to please. I'm here to tell you there comes a time in your life when you say it is my life. Amen. I will not blame where I came from. I've heard this scripture over and over, this statement over and over growing up, but I now understand it as a dad, as a husband. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
I learned that from my parents. However, I had to become that. I had to adopt it. I had to say, this is my life. And my parents, they came from a, a, another broken era in life. And they changed that pattern of life that was handed down to me. And I'm definitely going to hand it down to my kids. And I'm going to look at them and say the same things. Obey. So that it can be handed down to my grandkids. I want to say something to some of you. That you weren't handed down blessings. You were handed down curses. The curse of self-seeking. The curse of anger. The curse of fear. The curse of addiction. All of these things that the world says it's not your fault. You blame them. Even though there's some right to that. I will say this. It is your life. And you may not believe this right now, but I'm here to tell you right now, if you listen and obey God, you will break the curses for the rest of your generations. I'm telling you right now, some of you in this room, your children will never suffer what you had to suffer because you believed God and you held it down. That's what this is about. I don't care what the world says. I care to hand down my kingdom. And when I say my kingdom, it's the life that God has given me that I am grateful for. Yes, I could always compare to somebody else and want what they want. I could always look at the world and say I want more. But the reality is I'm so happy because it's God that whether I be in a mansion or whether I not have a home, I will praise his name. Amen. I heard a, a Christian man say this, and I thought this was beautiful. I have time. He asked me, he said, <clears throat> what is the definition of success? And I said, oh, have a lot of money. I mean, you know, be popular. Everybody likes you, you know. Maybe to, to be on the bachelor or bachelorette. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about. I was joking, by the way. But I said, you know, to, to, to be rich, to accomplish what you want, and, and all these different things, the guy says, man, you're focusing on the world's view of success, and if you focus on the world's view of success, it'll always have to be repeated. You'll never be satisfied, because the world will change it on you. But here's what God says. I have a life for you. If you listen and obey me, I will give you that life. And no matter what that life looks like, you will be so enthralled with joy and peace. Amen. That you'll love it. Will I be rich and famous? <laughs> no. <laughs> will I be everybody's favorite? <laughs> no. But you'll have what the world can't give. Amen. Peace when everything falls around. Joy when everybody else is suffering. You'll even have joy in the midst of your suffering. I know that doesn't make sense and you can't understand that unless you experience it. He said, if you give your life to the Lord and you allow him to create in you what he has desired, that is success. And you'll experience that. And you'll have a long life. And you'll be able to hand that down to your children. Some of you in this room say, Pastor, I don't have any children. You will hand it down to the people that you influenced in your life. Amen. Right now, if you're sitting there going, I've already blown up my life. Pastor Travis, I can't do anything. I'm full of curses. I'm here to tell you, listen to God and start breaking those curses. If you live in this room or you're in this room, you live in this world and you're like me and you came from a home that actually blessed you and loved you, then carry those blessings and love on by listening to the Lord. Amen. It's easy to be a part of a Christian culture. I'm not asking you to be a part of a Christian culture. I'm asking you to create a godly home. Amen. And a home is wherever you are. It's not the brick and mortar I ask you to be the church. The church is not the seat you're sitting in. It's not the stage. It's not these walls. It's within your heart. It's who you are when you walk out there. Amen. When you walk out there, you could absolutely have the worst job according to the world. Right? Some of you are like, I have that. 
If your job is to scrub toilets, then you do it under the Lord, and I promise you, you're going to enjoy your job. <laughs> no, and, and you sit there and you go, no, that's impossible. Nobody enjoys that. No, if you, if, you, if you give your job over to God and you say, Lord, I'm going to do this for you, I promise you, you're going to enjoy your job. And here's the thing about it. You're going to be so good at it, people are going to go, wow, you're, you're really good at cleaning toilets. And you're going to go, yeah, man, I don't know why. I just love toilets. <laughs> and people are going to go, that's really odd. But you're going to go, no, nah, man, I mean, it's, it's terror, you know, hard work, but I do it. Next thing you know, you start getting contracts. You start cleaning toilets. Next thing you know, you own your own toilet company. And next thing you know, you're being blessed and everything else. And pretty soon you, you create your own toilet called the Travis Commode. Instead of people saying, I need to go to the John, they'll say, I need to go to the Travis. I promise you, when that person dies, listen to me. When that person dies, it won't be, don't you regret that all you did was clean toilets? And they'll say, no, I clean toilets for God. Ooh, and what the world views is less than... I promise you that person who is obedient walks into the kingdom. Everybody knows them. Not because of who they were on the world or what they accomplished. Listen to this. Or what they failed at. But because within their life they chose to listen and obey. And because we do that, we create a generation of blessings to be handed down. So I'm telling you right now, if you don't have blessings and all you have is curses, let, I would love to walk with you and help you break those curses. If you have blessings, carry those blessings on. Amen. For as for me and my house, as for you and your house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask the people to come forward. We're going to take communion today. We're going to do this as an act of our will today. As we remember what Christ did for us on the cross. Today, we are given our life right now as it is. Failures, successes, whatever your life is right now. Regrets, hopes, dreams. We're going to place it at his altar. and We're going to say, Lord, all I need is you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Allen.